No, no. Who's there? Hashtag. Hashtag who? Hashtag no joke. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes, no jokes, no jokes, no jokes. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. Best podcast on the air, and it's a shame to live without it. Curtis Walker, funny guy, telling truths, never lie. With Boss Lady by their side, you know the limit is the sky. No disparity, just hilarity. With the clarity, you can give it back to charity. That's the ACLC, and the people in need with founders and trustees wanting you to succeed. Mm. African Caribbean leukemia trust. African Caribbean leukemia trust. Af- 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 African Caribbean leukemia trust. Donating organs and blood, fundraising and doing runs. They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun. Hashtag no jokes is really second to none. No, no. Who's there? Hashtag. Hashtag who? Hashtag no jokes. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no jokes. No jokes. Yes, blood. What's up, blood? <laughs> you good, blood? I'm oh, cool, blood. <laughs> you got blood? You got blood? Enough blood. Again, spear blood? Why, blood? NHS blood. You to succeed. African Caribbean leukemia trust. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust Af- Af- African Caribbean Leukemia Trust Donating organs and blood, fundraising and doing runs They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun Hashtag no jokes is really second to none Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes, no jokes, no jokes, no jokes. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. Best podcast on the air, and it's a shame to live without it. Curtis Walker, funny guy, telling truths, never lie. With Boss Lady, <laughs> the limit is the sky. No disparity, just hilarity. With the clarity, even giving back to charity. That's the ACLT, helping people in need. With founders and trustees wanting you to succeed. Mm. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Af- 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 African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Donating organs and blood, fundraising and doing runs. They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun. Hashtag no jokes is really second to none. No, no. Who's there? Who's there? Hashtag. Hashtag. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes, no jokes, no jokes, no jokes. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. Best podcast on the air, and it's a shame to live without it. Curtis Walker, funny guy, telling truths, never lie. With Boss Lady by their side, you know the limit is the sky. No disparity, just hilarity. With the clarity, even giving back to charity. That's the ACLT, helping people in need. Mm. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Af- 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 African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Donating organs and blood, fundraising and doing runs. They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun. Hashtag no jokes is really second to none. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No Give me some more. No Don't talk with your mouth full. No oh, Eddie. No <laughs> how do you, you get in this game? You're not supposed to be playing this thing. Can, can, can you see what's going on? Your mum does it better. Oh, you got a little something at the side of your mouth. That tastes good. <laughs> just, just lick it. Have you finished yet? I'm tired. Right. I'm tired. Too, that's a bit too much. For no, me. you don't say I'm tired at the dinner table. Gonna I'm just up. gonna wash no. up. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I've got to stop now because I'm full. Because <laughs> you're full. Stop I just now, say I don't me. eat that. I don't eat that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I don't eat pork. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Good afternoon to you, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Those jokes were so rude there uh, that clearly the music decided that it didn't want to come on. What a gorgeous day. Uh, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Thanks so much for joining us. Hashtag no joke. Uh, looking at stories from a slightly different perspective. We've got one more week to go after this. Ah, parting is such sweet sorrow and all of that. Uh, but look, let's make it good, shall we? Um, Curtis Walker is a ride or die. How are you, Curtis? Eddie Nesta. Nestor, N-E-S-T-O-O-R. I like it. Stasta. Nestor. Eh? You'll be Nesta like to me. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Nestor. Yes, clearly. I like Nestor. the way you say Nestor. Try to give me a hero <laughs> yes. dignity, eh? Well, somebody who doesn't bother with names just go by his uh, initials. DMT, Donna Murray Turner. Donna, uh, good afternoon hey. to you. How are good you, afternoon. Donna? I'm fine. Good How are you? Good afternoon, Donna. Love good the afternoon. backdrop. You love the backdrop? Yeah, well done. Thank you. <laughs> that was very funny last week. Got in a lot of trouble, but it was, it was very, very funny. So, look, <laughs> guys, um, there's a lot to get through today. Uh, just let me explain to everybody. Uh, this is no joke. Uh, we've been on now. This is the fifth one, working towards a big date, uh, which I'll let the boss lady tell you all about. Afternoon to you, boss lady. Hello. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm hot. Good. That's not hot. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I love the t-shirts, no joke. Check yeah. out the link in the bio. You can still get I've got all the merch around me. Yeah, yeah. looking yeah. good. And, and I love your backdrop, Donna. Well done. Yeah, we've got a whole new set coming up. Um, lots to tell you about, no joke, which will come up later on uh, in the show. Boss lady, as I say, a lot to fit in A today. lot to fit in. But firstly, please let me remind everybody... On the weekend, 19th of June, please book your slot to donate blood. We know how important it is. If you've already done it, please send me a love heart. Spots are filling up, but we there, there are still a few spaces left. And I know people have got concerns or they've got questions. So tomorrow, at between 5 and 6.30, there's a webinar on how to donate blood. You can ask any questions you want if you've still got concerns. But most importantly, please, 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 please book your spot for the 19th. Save a life. Yeah, Kojo, Thank who's you. been flirting with you every week on this, says uh, by saying, I'm hot, hot, you are bragging, you are showing up. No, no, I meant it's very hot. It's, it's 20 odd degrees. It's West Indian weather, Car Caribbean weather. Well, why Don't have you chosen it, to it? Well, you, she's, got, she's got the big with the sleeves on and everything if she yeah. could have worn a hoodie she would have worn the hoodie today i would have as well i would have no no listen but i was looking through instagram this weekend and i found this so thoughts please you're running on override men build the world that you live in oh okay, okay. who built that house or apartment you live in was it a crew of women <sighs> who designed the who designed the metal work who put in the floor, the plumbing, the the electrical system, the heating? Who put that in? The car you drive was that built by a crew of women? So, so, so women are not capable of doing none of those. Things. No, you're not good at it. And when I given a choice, excuse me, you're because when given a choice, because women are free today, right? Uh huh. And you're educated, right? Uh -huh. Then why don't we see 51% of the construction workers as women? Why don't we see 51% of the engineers as women? Why don't we see 51% of the, of the plumbers, electricians, military, train operators, heavy, dangerous work as women? Because when given an opportunity, women segregate themselves into more comfortable positions. Men do the dangerous work to build society. Okay. That's your place. That's my place. That's I I should follow my husband. I should follow the man. That's his place. We're not equal. He's stronger than me. He's he is. He and is. I, I, um... <laughs> this man was saying women should be submissive to their men. Uh... I don't think that's what he's saying, but I hear you. Boss lady. No, 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 that Eddie, Eddie, could you back me up on this? Why are you Eddie bring, why, has to back you what? up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the way that sounded like a threat. That sounded like a threat. He no, wanted to talk, but he can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded so intimidating. Eddie, back me up on this. Huh? Have you seen, have I don't you seen need to hear what he's going to say. He's going to say exactly what you wanted to say. 
<laughs> Eddie looked scared for real though. Eddie looked scared. He looked hey, like, What's no. the name of that guy? Kevin Samuels. Oh, so wow. he's Kevin he's another Samuels. one. Of, he's another one of these guys. In all truth, uh, Mrs. Nesta got me vexed today. So this week, so I I sent her that video. Her and one of her friends who I hear talking nonsense, and I sent yeah. them the video. I, I, look, I. I, I, I think it's great that you put it up because I, I use wonder your words, about Eddie. Don't be intimidated. Use your words. You got you got him stuttering now, boss lady. Yeah, Me. talk your talk, Eddie. I wonder about guys who make a living from destroying other people's lives. They and when I, when I, that gets that thing gets sent to me so often, different things he's done. <laughs> how, how tall are you? You're five foot two and one hundred and eighty pounds. <laughs> then, then you're a this. And, yeah. and I just, I just think it's nonsense what he said. Yeah. I do actually think. I mean, look, you Donna, have you heard of him? I heard of him. I saw <laughs> when he did the, he dissed the, dissed the guy first and said, yeah. well, "You're not eighty pounds. You're three hundred pounds, and you're five foot." Like, man, that's why nobody ain't dating you. I heard yeah. all of that, and I was like, "Okay, so I'm glad he's not around where I'm around." He well, just needs a really. He just needs a short, you know, one of them backhand that's down and up. But, yeah, but hold on, hold on. Be because I have to argue against everything, obviously, just being the thing. It is it not, do we not live in a world where we molly coddle and what? Mrs. Nesta got vexed with me because we got a 12 year old now who'd been playing the guitar from he was eight. I said to him, play me something the other day. He played it and I told him what I thought of it. And right. obviously, that's not the right thing to do. So I'm wondering, because it was just like, he might as well detect something and just bang it on something. Yeah, that's yeah. That, I wasted, we wasted our money. That child does not have rhythm in him. Yeah. So the, my point is, it, sometimes do, should we not tell people the truth? Or, or is that just... I believe, I, no, I, believe you should, I believe you should tell the truth, but everything requires context. Everything requires context. So the fact that he said all of that rubbish... Is exactly that. It's right. I know women who are gas fitters who work in the building. Like he just, it's, you can't generalize anymore because so many people do different things. So and is it wrong? Is, 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 are right women building cars? Are women building houses? Are women yes. in, in, in the kind of general generalize? No, no, Curtis, no, no, if there's no, a, if there's no. if there's three women on a on a factory line and they're putting together then whip and they're putting together cars, then women are building cars. That's right. Like, what? That's right. And, and right. more importantly, <laughs> what he was trying to say, it was almost like he was trying to say that someone else has to dim their light yeah. for him to be great. No, why, what why he's talking about yeah. is women no. who have expectations of a man in regards of look after me. Those American women that he's talking to, they all want a man who's earning more. And, and, and in this country. Stay, and, and in, in this country. This country. Well, I'm not qualified from where he comes from. But it's a very brave man that goes against a society that is so modern coddling of women because the balance has gone totally the other way. I Sometimes women <laughs> can be wrong. And we're not no, allowed right. to say that in this society. Sometimes okay. women oh, yes, can. can be okay. wrong. Right, this is, let's stop now. Let's stop now because we, we're going to get the comments and we do No, because we've got so many of these stories to get and we've got some fantastic guests and we've got some young people. We've got a lot to fit in, yeah? But please. At last, I've been looking for someone to join my age group. Well, well, you know, I, I really want you to say your bit. Sometimes, can you speak the truth? Do women go into a, a relationships with an expectation of a man not knowing that they don't bring anything themselves? What, what is it? What is it? Is this guy the kind of guy you follow? He's got an amazing following, and I don't really, thousand, yeah, I don't really, really get it. So, look, send your comments in. We love them. We read them, and uh, we enjoy them. We share them. So, please send them in. Um, we're also um, looking for you to take part, shout at, disagree with Curtis in particular, because that, that's really, really. Good. Yeah, you got, you got. Just before we bring on a special guest who's going to stay with us for a little while, I just have to check his lighting because I told him he's not like you and Curtis. So we need, we need bright lights, you know, like not like the way we used to have it on telly where you have to adjust it. Um, you got, you got. After we finished the show last week, there was a, a royal birth, was it, there, boss lady? Meghan and Harry. Yes, they, they had a, They had a they, baby. They kept it, it quiet for two days. Elizabeth. And then they announced it. Lilibert. Oh. Yeah, they did. So have a look at have a look at this. I wonder what people think of this. 
So how how black is she? <laughs> just just a little bit. <laughs> You know, all these things are going to lose me my uh, job, right? No, this is, this is, that's fun. That's fun. Oh, okay. Just a little bit. Boss lady, boss lady, thank you so much. Boss thank lady you. will be reading your comments and she'll yep. be back, okay? Thank, thank you, you so much. You uh, Boss lady. So, so the whole plan is for, for this to be around about an hour. We'll try and get it in. So last week was a difficult week. We talked about a lot of negativity. We've got some positivity coming out. But I'm coming up uh, Wanstead Station, and I can see a ruster man in front of me with his headphones on. I see him often, you know. Sometimes I interrupt him, and sometimes I, I don't. But this time, I don't know. I don't know if you do believe in divine providence, but I do. And I stopped this guy. And if be interested to, to hear who our next guest is, uh, Lord, Lord Victor Adebowala, he's a people's peer. Uh, so it is time for the people's peer to get involved with the people's show. So welcome to hashtag no joke, Lord Victor Adebowala. How are you, sir? Hello. I'm fine. Hi. I've got to tell you, I've, I've got dreads. I'm not. A, I'm not a raster. That's a, that's a religion. And I'm not a people's peer either. I'm just a peer. There's no such loving thing. See, see that. <laughs> just, just, those say, are the, just put in your Those, those your straight, are the any. conversations that just we have. So, if you think he's a lord and me and him are going to get on, we're not. He's gonna. <laughs> he's gonna contradict everything because he's. No, I'm, not I'm just correcting you. And I was listening to that to that nah. guy, that idiot nah. who was on talking about women engineers. <laughs> Has he not heard of Ada Lovelace, the woman who invented co modern computing? He's not or talking Eleanor about Cohen, Ada Lovelace. The first, the he first, was generalising. He was generalising well, about well, the world could, we he live could in. Generalize, he could generalise having read a book. That's right. <laughs> read That's a book. Right. He's generalised about the world we live in. position of ignorance. Generalise ignorance. Generalise ignorance. Well, well, And I wouldn't want my son or daughter listening to him. Sorry, no, just, but, but, but clearly you're on a personal capacity. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly, clearly, your wife is listening, so you've adopted a defensive no. position. This is just common sense. I like logic. Right, I see like the logic. shadow of a frying pan behind. Logic, me. reason, and facts, Mister Walker. Logic, reason, <laughs> right, and facts. Right. So and can facts. I can I actually properly introduce you? I mean, you're going to fit in perfectly. I mean, and I think after the second week I did it, I met you in the corner and said, "Would you do it for me one day?" Uh, yeah, but 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 um. <laughs> Joke, yeah. joke, yes. no, no, you don't. You're not, and it's going to get worse. Um, <laughs> thank you for coming on. Thank you for coming on. So, it's lovely to see you. Uh, 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 um, Victor lives across the road, round the corner, not too far. Um, a, a, and we grab a word. Came on the show more than a decade or so ago now, um, and is a mover and shaker. But I said to him today, he's like a secret. So so let's not get into any of the national health stuff and anybody wants to look you up, they can see that. Let's jump straight into the reason that specifically you fitted into the show today. We were determined that we were not going to do a whole show about negativity in regards to young people, particularly young people of colour, again. Um, I do have a little bit of audio to play for you in a little while because I spoke to the Commissioner of the Metropolitan uh, Police. But I started talking to you and I just want you to tell everybody how our conversation went in terms of raising money. Well, when we talked about raising, what are you building? Tell me what you're building. Oh, yes. So, yeah, I know, I'm really proud of this. So um, I've been involved in a, in a charity uh, run by the wonderful Pamela McCormack uh, for about, oh, God, it seems like a long time anyway, probably 10 years now. And we've been building uh, something called the Talent House, and um, it's going to open August, September, and it's um, a centre for very for talented young people, most mostly Black East London kids um, who've got loads of talent. You know, the thing is, talent is everywhere, opportunity isn't. So we're building a place where opportunity and talent can come together, and it's going to be in um, in Sugar uh, Sugar Island, just um, the old the old um, opposite from the Olympic Park. Uh, we're building a bridge across there. We're building this thing. We've raised four million quid, um, and we well, still well, need to raise it. more. We still need well, to raise more. So yeah, no, hold think, on. How, how do you, rich brothers I, and sisters out there? I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to. I'm trying to raise fifty quid to do a, a show, and we can't do it. How do you raise four million pounds? 
it takes it takes a long time. <laughs> it takes a long time. But the formula is get yourself a really good idea. It's not about you. Um, uh, we've 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 partnered with well the Arts Council. I mean, this is for mainly mainly black kids, so it's always a little harder when you're talking about black kids. For reasons. Um, the Arts Council, uh, Newham Council, have put their bit in. Uh, we've had some money and donations from Vastint, who've been really good on the building. Uh, it's on their site. Uh, we're working with um, a number, just a, a whole list of trusts and foundations that we've put in bids with. Um, we have a partner in this project, East London Dance, so it's going to be music and dance in the same place. Um, and um, yeah, I'm really, I can't wait till it's open because young people need hope. They've had an absolutely dreadful, dreadful, I mean, we've basically taken probably two years off their life because of COVID. And that's just, that's, that's just a, uh, I mean, it's a lot, it's going to affect them for years, basically. Yeah, and I mean, I'm looking at that, this year, the, uh, year, year 11 and year austerity. 13, but that's two, two years on the top of yeah, austerity. Absolutely. So basically, this could be the first generation um, that has, most generations, your kids have grown up better off to be better off than you. This could be the first generation where that ain't the truth. Yeah. Um, and of course, black kids get it in the neck twice as bad as, as white kids, no matter what you hear. And so I've got a feeling the in the future there'll that. be a generation known as COVID children. You know what I mean? I think that, that's possible. I think you're absolutely right. Generation but, that will yeah, explain yeah. so much in the future. I think. I think my worry is the impact on young people, education, uh, training. They're the ones that have lost their jobs. Oh, great! Oh, my daughter's just brought me a cup of tea. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and. Um, they're the ones that are going to get it in the neck. They're the ones that are losing their jobs. They're the don't, ones that, don't, Curtis. You know, so it's not great. I know. I know what you're thinking, Curtis. Yeah, I know, but yeah, I'm yeah, trying yeah, to. Well, yeah. well, you you clearly know Curtis, and you know what he's thinking. Stop it, yeah, Curtis. I'm just, figuring, I'm just figuring it out. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, so, um, so um, I'm really, I'm, I'm really pleased with the talent house. I hope you come to the opening. And if there's any yeah. people out there that want to, want to give money to a good cause. Look up, look, look up United Development because we need all the support we can get. Right. Well, look, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about why you've got it, what, what's happening with young people and the like, um, because that's going to kind of dominate dominate our show a bit today. But thank you. Um, I want uh, clearly. I was going to say to you, please speak your mind, but you're not really the sort of person. <laughs> <laughs> you've already, you've already, you've it's already. Just one of those days, Eddie. And, yeah, uh, those come days. on. Look, I, I switch right. on. I'm in, I'm in the green room when I'm listening to this idiot <laughs> talking about slagging off women and talking about work, men right, doing right, this well. and men doing that. And I just, think, it, I was. Do you realise? Your daughter brings a cup of tea was, in the middle of that was, state, but that's nice. Was, no, but women can be, women can be kind. And I, 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 I understand bring, you, my I'm brother. Bring, I get you, my brother. I've no, been, no. I have, right, I, have so a, I have an allergy to nonsense. I'm sorry, Eddie. Well, look, you're gonna you're gonna really be itching by the end of this, then, because oh. um, we've got lots. Because it's the way it goes. The show's nonsense, and it's mm. kind of grounded as well. So, um, can, let, 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 let me agree, let me bring on Boss Lady because I'd love to hear um, what people are saying in regards to Kevin Samuels. Because it'll be quite a long way to go back before we go forward. So, but Boss Lady, hopefully you're you're listening. I can see lots of people have had um, a lot to say uh, on it. Give us an idea um, what you heard, what the Baron had to say, but give us an idea what people have been saying. Well, most people don't like him. They think he's a misogynist. Who's um, the Baron? The Baron or Kevin? <laughs> no, no, Kevin. Firstly, <laughs> Kevin. Um, um, people are just saying Yorkshire, how proud they honest. are of you raising the yeah. money, and thank you. It's a great achievement. Um, Yvonne says, I'm a female computer engineer and consultant and have been for 20 years. Yes, and to you, Curtis, Andy <laughs> has said, specifically <laughs> to you, <laughs> you got me in trouble with Ida. As I said, sometimes women are wrong. And she replied, yes, but men are wrong all the time. All the time. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Men are wrong all the time. All the time. Yeah. I just think people are saying, look, before there weren't opportunities for women to do a lot of these things, but it's not what Donna was saying is they do things, they do smaller parts to make up the whole right. big part. No, so it's no, not what you got to understand. No, no, that guy's no. show is about relationships and what everybody's looking for in a relationship. So his, 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 he has his, 
from his point of view. But that's what a lot of people were saying. They haven't seen his partner, and apparently there's been a few dodgy pictures. Yes. I'll let yes. you, your mind, imagine yes. those, yeah, which yeah, is why yeah, he might that. have those views towards women specifically. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he's a kind of man the talk. Yeah. It's a Sunday afternoon. It's he's got female preferences. problems. Maybe his mum is well, talking so. up. Yeah, is I what? think... Um, Sorry, Donna? I said he's got female problems. Maybe his mum used to lock him up. Like he's okay. got a thing I, for women. I do, I, do, I do think he's a misogynist, but I do think really? there are a lot of, there are a lot of uh, people on these types of platforms. Earn it. Candy Owens would be one, and we've got them here in this country who are actually earning a living. Uh, they're, 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 you know, they're purveyors of hate, I call them. And I do, you know, we, we, we don't normally play them, but I, I think we're going to play around with some... Uh, relationship type thing. Curtis has got clearly lots of advice he'd like to give us all about how to get and to keep a successful relationship <laughs> going. So, um, <laughs> boss, <laughs> boss lady, um, let's introduce this bit now. I wasn't going to play this piece of audio. Welcome, Victor. But I think that a little bit of it uh, serves to help us understand the context of today's show. Uh, so last week was a lot about videos about all the negative things that we've seen. And this week uh, on my drive time show, I had the opportunity uh, of speaking to the Metropolitan Police Commissioner, Cressida Dick. Now, <clears throat> we, she talked about a lot of things, including abduction. So maybe we'll get to that a little later on. But here she speaks specifically to the issue that we're going to talk about in a few minutes. 15, to the 7th of June, we've had 15 teenagers killed in this city. And in terms of the people who are accused of homicides, I'm sorry to say a very high proportion of them are teenagers too. So we do have an issue in this city, not just this city, it's a, it's a international and indeed national phenomenon of very young people thinking it's sensible to, to carry a knife and some of them being extraordinarily violent. So Justine's point is, what is everybody doing about that? Um, the mayor, as you may know, has his kind of long-term plan. The government do too. We work closely with those. And they are about probably the sorts of things you're thinking about, Justine, which is about education. It's about intervening early with children who are at risk of getting involved. It's about trying to give young people other pathways, divert them away. That's other pathways, divert them away. Now, one of um, the charities I'm involved with is one called Urban Synergy. And a few months ago, we had um, uh, Leila Thomas on, who, who's the head honcho there. And we tried to have a young person on as, a, as an example. Um, we've got two today, uh, one of them with their mum. Ava, um, fingers crossed, the technology works this time in a way that it didn't before. Ava. Welcome to Hashtag No Joke. Is it working? Yes. 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 That's you. Welcome. 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 Finally. Finally. Now, look, um, you know, we we tried to have you on before. T tell us a little bit about you. What, who are you? How did you come to be involved uh, with a mentoring charity? Yeah, so my name's Ava. I'm 18. I recently just finished sixth form at a college called Christ the King St Mary's in Sidcup. And I came to know about Urban Synergy through my college, really. And they do, they run multiple programmes throughout the year in my college for year 12 and 13. And the first time I heard about them, I was like, eh, I don't really know if I want to get involved. But then lockdown happened and all the internships dried up, all the work experience dried up. And I thought, what am I going to do with myself? And then one day I got an email and they said, you know, we're doing some e-mentoring program where you get to connect with industry professionals. And I thought, you know what? It's time. This is the time. So that's how I really got um, to know about them. So, so what sorts of stuff are you doing? Lots of people are working remotely. I mean, I don't think we would have had no joke if it wasn't for the lockdown. What sorts of things have you done and how has it impacted on you? So basically through... Um, Urban Synergy, through the e-mentoring program, they put me forward for an internship with uh, a data provider called Finitiv. And it was a really rigorous sort of process, but I got, I got it and I worked in the risk department. I got to meet people from all across the risk department. I got to attend like a G7 summit on coronavirus recovery. It was crazy. Um, I got to write a paper about green crime, about environmental crime, and it was published. And I got to do a presentation, like a 40-minute presentation at the very end of it. We should... We ever gone? Where's Ava gone? Anyway. 
I just it's just getting interesting, wasn't it? It was just yeah. you know I, I I was waiting to find out because yeah. it sounded it sounded to me like going on that opened her mind, I, I, and that's why it's always good to have more. I will come back to Ava in a little while. Uh, let, let me let me let me bring on um Elliot. Elliot's with his mum Cynthia. Elliot, afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Hey. Elliot. Good afternoon. How are you? How are, yeah, how are you? Greetings, mum. You Hello, first, you? and you more importantly, uh, you were out raving last night, which is why you couldn't talk to me when I phoned <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, look. Um, yours is really interesting because th th they've been telling me about you, young man for a little while now. Uh, why don't you talk about yourself? Tell, tell me who you are, what you're doing. Um, so my name's Elliot um, and I'm 22 years old and I've just graduated from Coventry University. Um, yeah, so um, I started Urban Synergy back when I was about 13, 14 years old. So like secondary school. And um, it was like a really hard time at home with uh, me and my mum. And um, I got involved with them and I got a mentor called Victor. And during that time, um, we used to go do activities, have conversations about things at school. Uh, when there was issues um, going on at school, he'd come up with me and my mum and just like kind of sort, talk to his teachers. Um, but that really set me in good stead. And then over time through Urban Synergy, I've been able to go on work experience as well um, with like TFL, um, I've also gone to some networking events as well. So it's just been a really good experience, kind of like, it took me from a place which was kind of a bit shaky to somewhere which I'm really like happy to be now. So, yeah. Well, it's a pleasure, it's an honor for us to be able to speak to you today. Mm. Mum, might, might I talk to you? Because yeah. we're, we're at a happy place, right? Yeah. We're at, we're at a good place where a mum can say, that's my big boy. I'm proud of my boy. I love my boy. But I'm guessing we're at the destination. And for us, if you don't mind, and for many of the people watching and listening now, it's the journey that's that's fascinating, yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, tell me about that 12 or 13 year old that couldn't sit properly still in a seat. Okay, yeah. So um at the time i think elliot had just um he started secondary school and so on and quite promising at the time and um as soon as he started secondary school he just there was just the stream of detentions every day every day there was something and i was just thinking what's what's going on with all that so anyway, primary um, school had been okay yeah yeah primary school he'd been okay um i'd say yeah he'd been okay up until year six and then it was it was a bit rocky. He had his first fight, I think, in year six, which was um, unusual. <laughs> but uh, for him, it was unusual. So there was some stuff going on. And then he was transitioning to secondary school. And I don't know. Um, yes, yeah, things changed when he got there. And I think possibly because everything was so new. And um, I just, yeah. And also, he was really keen. He was really keen to... Um, to show that he knew things and so on. He was always putting up his hand, but that was a problem apparently because he was co constantly put up his hand to answer questions and he was ignored. And when he was, got ign when he was ignored, he, it made him disruptive, I guess, um, after a while because they weren't listening to him. And it's also feeling like, you know, they were, they were totally ignoring him and um, him feeling that he wasn't significant. And See, I th I feel like you're talking to me through the kind of the prism of kind of where you are now. Well, I, I, I'm okay. fascinated by where you were then. What made oh, you okay. think I need to get outside help for my child? Um, so, uh, well, he was really uh, angry and um, getting getting into these problems, like I thought, and I, it was just escalating every week. It seemed to get worse. And also, he wasn't really listening to me. Um, so, um, obviously, we got um, my brother. My brother's really involved with him, and so on, like that. I've got um, one brother, and you know, he's got a lot of time for Elliot, and so on. But his dad wasn't it hasn't been around. wasn't around up to then either. Um, so, I think it was. I was desperate. I was thinking, you know what? I don't want my son to go down 
down the, the drain just like just in an instant from going from year six where he was promising to going to year seven and I had a, a, a booklet of detentions and um, I don't know if you, um, I think he started to have internal exclusions as well at that point and I think it was the internal exclusion that made me think well this has got out of control so out of control I really just need to do something so I remember texting so a friend of mine told me about Urban Synergy and I texted Diane, I think it was, and said, you know, I understand you have this organisation. I think my son really needs a, a mentor. Can you can you help? I really don't want my son to, you know, to fail. And I didn't get a response at first. And then she came back and said, oh, you know, this, they, um, this is a programme. They currently, they currently didn't have enough mentors, in fact. And also, we weren't in the borough. We weren't in Lewisham. We were somewhere else. And I just was sort of desperately sending these texts to her saying, you know, I, you know, I'm really scared for what's going to happen if I don't get some sort of help in sort of intervention with it um, currently. And, um, and then they came through and we went to a role model seminar and we started to do some of the activities. He was assigned a mentor and so on, and and that really really seemed to help. And I think um, one of the things was one of the things Elliot said to me was, I want to talk about you know it's nothing against you, Mum, but I just want to talk about guy things sometimes. I don't you know you're not really you're not really into the same. You don't really understand. You don't get it. You don't get it. And I. You know, and I say, we could speak to your uncle and he was saying, no, you know, you just don't get it. I need, you know, and so that's why I thought, well, a mentor is going to be ideal for him because somebody is totally independent. It doesn't have, you know, any ties to us and can be quite impartial. And um, and so that's the journey. That's how it started. So one of the people who we've paid homage to on this show, um, Paul Lawrence, was one of the people when me and Boss Lady went to see what they did, who was there, and he, the person who's sadly no longer with us. But I wonder, Elliot, really, I know how I feel, and I'm going to talk to Curtis and Victor, and I don't know why, as mums, I'll talk to Boss Lady uh, and DMT. But how does it make you feel hearing how what your mum was going through and what your mum was worried about? Um, it's quite upsetting, to be honest. Um, yeah. I think... Back then, I'm not really aware of it. Um, and I think because it's so caught up in the time, uh, you don't really understand everything that you're kind of projecting onto others. Um, but as I've grown older, I kind of look back at the time and um, I kind of regret it, but also I think it was like the making of me as well. I think like from that, there was like a lot of development that was able to start from there. So yeah, it's, kind of half and half but yeah overall it's a bit yeah what was your degree in um electromechanical engineering jeez what what did you get um a first that's yeah. my boy that's my boy <laughs> that's not traveling tourism is it that's I, 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 well I, done I, i've got to tell you, you you two have got me up in my feelings here you know because <laughs> I just think there are lots and lots of mums like you, Cynthia, and I think there are lots and lots of boys, excuse me, young men like you, Elliot, and I think with intervention, we could save a whole bunch of people, you know. Listen, I, I'm going to let you go. I just, It's an absolute honour to meet and to speak to both of you, and I'm hoping that what was done for you, Elliot, hopefully you can do for somebody else. It, a pleasure to meet both of you. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. Bye. Absolutely. Oh, 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 my oh. Let, let, let me just but see if this, this... that before. Be, before we go with it, because we've all got lots to say, Curtis. But let me just, <coughs> if, if Ava's still there, let me, just, let me just bring Ava back up. Ava, are you there? No? Are we able to get Ava in? That's what happened with Ava last time. It just didn't, it didn't work. So, so, so sorry. Uh, Curtis, please say, say your piece. Um, it's just uh, about Elliot and his family there. It's that journey of young boys, young men, it's a typical journey, you know, and uh, as we've kind of maintained, it's about people, the organisation getting involved and catching them at the right time because every young person has that in them, as, every, as you're saying about the talent within and 
um, building of schools and building of these places. It needs us to show love and support. And that's all it requires. That's a so sad that it's a simple thing, you know. And as we've gone through society, we've shut down certain things where we could help young people and the mentoring. I remember that's been going like 20 odd years. I was involved in it myself, but it's, it's emotionally exhausting, but so rewarding to mentor groups of um, young people. And that's the guidance they need. And we know how easy that is. But it's just to get those institutions together to work together. It's a fantastic story. But there's millions of guys that would go the same way yeah, with I'm the gonna, right support. I'm, I'm going to come to you, Victor, in a little while. I just want to get Donna in. From a, a mother's perspective, here was a mother. The son is probably taller than her now. She can see, she can read, she knows what's going on. She understands that that kid goes from being the cutest, nicest thing in the world at 10 to being the world's most dangerous uh, human being or type of human being by the time he's 14 and she made an intervention. How, how did that story speak to you, Donna? I was so proud. I was so proud because obviously I work and have done with lots of parents who aren't anywhere near where Cynthia is. and will often go and seek the help that they need for themselves and, and, and their child. There's a certain, I was just going to type in the chat when you were asking us some particularly pointed questions because I was like, oh, we've got to be careful here because, you know, we might be getting mum to expose some of her feelings around it that might be shame because that's what I deal with on a day-to-day. -day. Parents who don't access services because of feelings of shame, even though they know their child is in desperate need of this level of support. So for me, watching Elliot and Cynthia, I was so proud because it shows that it works, exactly as as, as, as Curtis said. If you get the help or if, if people in your, it doesn't have to be you, they can just be people in your circle. You might say, listen, this might help, but you have to, and this is something I wanna to say to everybody listening, in order to get help, you have to be in a place to receive it. So, you know, I think shout out to Cynthia as well for having the humility to say, look, I can't do it. Let me get help and let me receive the help that was given to me. And I think I'm, I just a bit tearful. It's so, it so crucial because parents, so sometimes we get embarrassed and we think we fail if we're reaching out. And there is a point where you as a parent know where that point is. And you're the right. only one who's seeing it, you know. Right. And that think is when you have to, it's just phenomenal the way the parent is able to see I need help and not afraid to ask for it. And we as a yeah, society because... need to get over that. Let, 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 me, really... let, me, let, let, let me bring in Victor, only, only because he's our guest and, and, and clearly we can run with it, but it'd be lovely to hear. Now, look, you know, I met you at Turning Point, you were chief executive there. Uh, I know it's a housing charity, but actually you've introduced me to people who do things all around that because it's a, it's a whole... It's a whole bunch of different uh, things that have to come together in terms of support, isn't it? How did that story touch you, Victor? Sorry. Well, Lord, Lord Adibola. Victor, <laughs> come on, Eddie. Come on, Eddie. We, we don't... We, it's, my name is Victor. Unless you want to sell me I know, something. I know, know, no, I know. I it's know it's Professor of the Lord Victor Adibola, TBE. But... But, 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 <laughs> but um, I think... Look, I think that you. story is, is, is so heartwarming. Um, the, the thing is, I, I was the chief executive centre point when we first met. And then I went to Turning Point, which is which is a health child charity, actually. So my career's gone from point to point. But the point is, the thing is, those young people are, are let down by many of the education institutions that we all pay taxes to. And what shocked me about that um, that interview, which was was brilliant, was the how lucky he was. You know, lucky to have a mother that persisted in getting him the support. Um, lucky that he didn't go down the road that so many very intelligent young black men and, and women go down, which is getting ignored at school, getting bored, and then behaving to get the attention that they crave, yeah. Yeah. and then getting... And if you read Akala's book, Natives, he, he describes his own journey. This is a guy who is a modern-day polymath. Yeah. And when he was at school, he put his hand up because he knew the answers. And the teachers, and frankly, some of them were just plain racist, even though they may have read The Guardian at the time, they they ignored, they ignored him. And in fact, he got into trouble for answering the questions. And I talked to a lot of black kids, and uh, frankly, that, you know, there but for the grace of God go I. You know, I had a mother like, like, um, uh, like Elliot's mother. You know, she, she wasn't going to stop. She wasn't going to let me fail. And she kept driving into me. But I don't know about any of your listeners and people watching this, but... As a black kid, I was always told by my parents, you know, as a black person, you've got to work twice as hard as the white guy. 
right now i'm 59 and and i think i think i used to think well that was true but it shouldn't be i yeah. should just have i should just need to work hard right and you know elliot's story sadly you know he got a first yeah. but it's not it's not as common as it should be. It should be normative. Right. So, so can I challenge? You know, we, we're clapping can him I, because can we think I challenge it's not normative. It? No, it no, we're, cra we're, cra it we're clapping him because we, we work in the world of news, and news, as you know, bad news makes news more than good news, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, when, when I talk to people about the Nigerian family, woman that I met and interviewed who told me that she had an expectation at her, of her daughter at the age of nine that she would go to university. It is not, if we're honest, and with due respect to Elia and to Cynthia, is not that story that you heard there a story of a boy who was looking for something outside of the home that he might, have been, that he might have been able to get if dad had played a part in his life? Well, is, that, I, I, is that not the truth? No, it's yeah. not the truth, actually. And, and I'm a, look, I'm I, I'm a I'm a I'm a so kind of sociologist. That's not uh, you know. My, I, and look, there is a lot of um, the evidence is that just the evidence that it's not necessarily you know. There's a lot of politics around you know two pair. I was brought up by single by single parent pretty much. I know many successful black people, black men and women who are brought up by single parents. Nobody's frankly, challenging think, that. But no, no, not, but, but that this, no, no, but hang on, hang on a minute, Ed, let him Ed, finish his question. question. Let me, let me answer. All I'm, all I'm saying is that, um, for a start off, you know, when people say you got to really understand what you say. You, you, when people say, well, you know, wouldn't it be better if you had a father? Okay, let me just break that down a bit. First of all, what kind of father? What kind of father are we talking about? Are we talking about a father that's not at home? That 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 um, that maybe beats him or drinks or isn't emotionally present? Or well, doesn't Mr. doesn't support you have it. To, so you have so to look, hang on, hang on. Hang on. You're, 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 you're telling, telling me to let him it finish. It wasn't about the, the father, you know, Victor. What the point Kirk. was, let me he was looking for something that any father. Oh, and she it's mentioned not, her brother no, came no, in and helped. I'm not having to be the father. Curtis, I'm going to mute myself I'm not negating. I'm not negating. We've invited a guest. Let's listen. I'm not negating the role of men. I'm simply saying, I'm not not negating the role of men. I'm simply saying that young people need to be brought up by in a stable environment in which they are supported and loved. That can be provided by a single woman, a single man. Generally, also, when, when they get to the age of teenagers, this is, this is not about race, just, to, just to, young people um, uh, like the company, prefer the company of people their own age at a certain point. That is yeah. just a fact. So, 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 so you're preparing your, your kids throughout your time as a parent for them to grow, to explore, to find out within boundaries, and then become um, hopefully responsible members of society and, and adults. But you know, I don't. I, I'm always a bit suspicious of this notion that wouldn't it be better if you had to? You know, it depends. It depends. But, and I'm always careful you, not you, to offend single parents, male or female, because yeah, many of them do a great job. Point we were making. Period. That's my point. We weren't making that point. It was I about it him. <laughs> go, go, on, go on, Donna. Go on now, because. I really no, would no. like to hear me. I, I was just going to say, so I'm a pedagogue and I wanted to just say, say to Victor, do you feel that sometimes this behaviour is about attachment issues? One of my colleagues who's watching has put, sometimes behaviour in the classroom can mirror lack of attachment in the home. So do you feel that, can, I agree with you, do. I agree with you That's that it true. doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be mum and dad. It can be a single parent, but the parent must have that support network around them, no? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I agree. No, parenting yes. is very tough. And one yes. of the things that we don't provide, provide sufficient support for is parenting in society. And, you know, um, su successful societies actually do have those structures. So, yeah, sometimes it can be attachment issues. It could be all kinds of issues. But, hmm. you know, what I suppose what I'm saying from the, there's a number of things I would say from the point of view of black kids, there is ample evidence that the education system does discriminate against them. So particularly when they're smart. So th there's, there's ample evidence. Secondly, oh, yeah. all parents need support from things like health visiting, social services, the kids, things that are actually being cut. And, and the third thing I'd say, all kids need a supportive adult environment in which to learn to be adults. And to be stable in that environment. I, That's I, it. I, I, yeah. I, can, I come Stability from a community helps. where women go to parties and shout out that they don't need no man. I, got, I come from a community where historically through slavery, you know, as a man, a, a man, master might come tomorrow and bring his brethren and whatever. We come from a place 
if we're often, and I, I'm mostly Caribbeans as opposed to Africans now, where that's been a part. I see it playing out in my own head that, that, that we talk about it. Oh, uh, nobody's attacking women who have to do it on their own. Why would I do that? Why would anybody do that? But I also have to use my mind and look at the number of children I see dying on the streets. And there is no positive male ro role model I'm in their house. I'm going to go one yeah, step further. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not arguing, I'm not arguing that, people, that, that children don't need positive role models. Why? Just to be clear, Eddie, I'm not arguing with you about the need for positive role, uh, male role models. I'm simply saying I'm very careful about yes. the arguments that suggest okay. that single okay. parents can't, because I, th I don't think it's helpful. That's, that's well, all I'm well, saying. Well, on the more positive side of it, I think that for me, uh, it's something I've advocated for uh, to the commissioner of the Met Police, and I'm trying to get the mayor on. So for me, there's an obvious way that we can impact on the lives, as well as people like you, Donna, doing what you're doing, as well as you, uh, Victor, uh, doing what you're doing. I think you're one of our best kept secrets, which is why we're honored to have you, <laughs> even though it doesn't, well, it doesn't feel like that because we spend a lot of our time arguing, but it's not arguing, it's reasoning. Well, yeah? it's no, it's not a reason. reasoning. Yeah, and if you if you drank a decent drink like brandy as opposed to silly gin, then we could actually do it together. Oh man, he was doing so well until you just gin. Mother's ruined. He, he, he did drink gin. Right, he I said, no, that is no, no, but, 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 but the point, uh, the point I'm making <laughs> before we bring on the boss lady. Curtis to get looks disgusted. Daughter, I don't know. <laughs> is that mentoring? I've done it with Urban Synergy. We That's went so to a I. school and they took over the whole. Year, right? I think it was year 10 or 11. They all had to wear suits. They all had to prepare, prepare a CV. And the teachers at the school said to me, they saw people grow. They saw people yeah. believe that they could do think, and be. Yeah. And, and I think that that's a shame can. about not getting to the end of Ava I then, think, because I think, I Ava, think, look, Ava's I, now going to Oxford or Cambridge. She, yeah, her I mind and her all, possibilities. I think that is all true. That. But look, let me tell you two things. One, it really it, it, it irritates me, actually. Some of the things that I heard the commissioner of the Met Police say, I just think, you know, I, I, I chaired the London Youth Crime Prevention Board um, uh, under Boris Johnson. I think you're aware of some of the work I did. I did the work on stop and search. We know what to do. It is not a mystery. What really, what really makes me frankly angry is that they do not do it. And that's, it's not that we don't know what to do. We do know what to do. I've told them, not just me, they don't do it. So that's that's one thing. The second thing is, you know, people like you, Eddie, and Curtis and Donna and others have had to fight for years. It's only three weeks ago we discovered that in the 70s, the 70s, late 70s, black kids, completely yeah. normal, healthy, yeah. intelligent black kids were being placed in special schools. And educationally kids, subnormal, yeah. Educationally subnormal. Some of them for putting the hand up for in, in class. Yeah. You know, so so let's not we, know, we we have come a long way, but we have a long way to go. It is still not, in my view, an equitable education oh, system. Um, and we, we have a lot of work to do. And and mm -hmm. people, you know, Elliot as as is, is he has worked twice as hard and he's clearly a highly intelligent man. But he, you know, all I'm saying is we should expect that experience as normative right. for all right, kids, right, right. regardless of the colour of the skin. Uh, raise your children with an expectation of what they will achieve. Yeah, but I think that, 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 that if whatever you do that, that from it, for whatever, whatever that might be. Uh, that boss is. lady, please come on, because, you know, Vic, Victor doesn't have any problem. What did she put in that tea, Victor? Was there gin in the tea? <laughs> <laughs> boss Nothing lady was coming in. <laughs> well, loads and loads of comments this one has generated. Um, Stella says, youngsters just need positive role models, full stop. Some single parents have brought up amazing children doing brilliantly. Sarah says, some children really suffer from the absence of their father, blaming themselves for the absence. Dee says, it takes a village to raise a child. We all have a responsibility for moulding the next generation. Um, parents need to listen as well and not just say, go and read your book. Um, Lee and many comments to Cynthia and Elliot, not just one, but to both of them once for recognizing the problem and for reaching out, which is mm. one of the most difficulty, um, difficult things. Sandy says mentoring is so vital and important, like Saturday school. Her mummy sent her and her little brother, and that was 40 years ago, and that was life changing. And um, 
Carol says, big up to Layla and Urban Synergy. And for yes. me, just, just, yeah. just, I mean, really important with mentoring. And, and just for me, listening to Elliot's story, I know, Eddie, we've got our 12-year-old, and he's at the road where he's listening to music. He wants to wear a particular type. He's thinking about his hair. And you can just see that he's going on that road where all that is almost more important than his education. He's got his assessments now, and you have to keep pushing him to go and study. And, you know, parenting, you're not taught how to do it, but you just worry for them. And so it's good to hear um, Elliot's story and how he progressed story. through but, that. But, 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 but Victor's right, isn't he? That, that that should be what we're here talking about, everybody. That should be normal. And the fact That's that right. perhaps... Mm. And it might be more than we think, actually. It is. But, but we have to start putting that out and so celebrating that, that more. And celebrate it. So that's what people are saying. And that's and, why know, we yeah. applaud. I... That's why we applaud because I don't know when a young black child boy has been applauded, has been oh, yeah, I, I, And so I, any I, opportunity today, we get to do that, I will do that. I, I applaud them but, on the street, not, you know, hand capping, but good morning, good afternoon, hello, sir. Guys, you need to give that off, give that off to them. They are positive people. Give that out to our young, celebrate I, them more. And it also empowers them because, you know, every time someone does something good, like our children, they do something good, comment on it. I reward That's them. Right. I make them feel like, That's wow, right. you have done something good. And even right. if they haven't done something good, I don't say you've done something bad, yeah. but I, 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 I give them. If they even can't play them. the guitar, tell them I've wasted my money on you. No, it's how you say it, though. I don't think that's a good idea, actually. It's how you I say actually, it. I think what you should do is, is because <laughs> at that age, what we what we know about 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 kids and instruments. Speak louder, most, Victor. Speak louder. There's people in the room that need to what we, hear what you're saying. At the back, what what yeah. we know, what we know about kids um, and instruments, and particularly music and talent, and most of the kids that have, have developed amazing talents tried several different instruments before they found the one. That really went for them. So, if actually, if you say to them, "You're rubbish," da -da, that's going to put them off. Not just that instrument, but music or trying. So, your kid should be a congratulations. I'm trying. I'm for trying picking to put him off one extra. He should, be, capital, he should be. He should be. Extra, that's what I'm trying to congratulated for picking it up. <laughs> congratulated for trying. Congratulated yeah. for learning. And he'll soon yeah. realise if he's not talented enough to be the next, you know, whatever. <laughs> And I'm he'll gonna, pick up another instrument. It's, Victor, it's I'm, 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 I'm just with, I'm, I'm, I'm just with, just with sorry, oh, I'm God. just with Victor. I try to criticize using pos positive language. That's yeah. what I try to do. Give me, give me an example, please, boss lady. That sounds oh. fantastic. Should we play it again tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> meaning, let's, pra meaning let's when, practice. When I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, he went for this lady. They were shots fired. They were shots fired, didn't they? No, Lisa, Lisa, say I something don't... back. Don't just take it. No, Lisa, it leave it, boss lady. Had a situation right, boss lady, where a friend, boss lady. Lady. Yes, had a situation right. where a friend yes. had recorded a song, all right, and they formed a group and they recorded this song and they played the song to a group of friends and one of my friends said, "Have you listened to it in the dark?" <laughs> <laughs> and it just summed it up. It was like, what? And the guy was like, what? Okay, it's a bus, in the dark. Bus, bus lady, we'll be back in a minute. Listen, it's already four minutes to the end of the show, and we ain't got anything in yet, right? Um, <laughs> thanks, bus lady. Right, so let's get the comments in. No, I know it's, this is where the show goes I, wrong, isn't listen it? To it? In the dark, you know? oh, sorry. Right, um, right so I, I'm going to run through some of these. DMT, <laughs> the Prime Minister Boris Johnson yesterday uh, alluded to the fact that um, perhaps we needed to be slightly more conscious or cautious about uh, the day that we're all looking forward to next Monday. What mm -hmm. are you thinking about the chances of uh, this day being our Independence Day? Well, I don't uh, think so. Well, I think... I don't... I I don't, I don't increasingly, I'm not hearing idea. the enthusiasm like it's... And it, it makes no difference to me anyway, to me. So I don't, everything's yeah. just same, same for me. <laughs> Victor? Victor? A, well, I mean, look, I, I happen to be the chair of the NHS Confederation, amongst the other things. We just did a survey of our members, and most of our members think that um, we should delay the, the um, we should delay the twenty first. And um, I would agree with that. I think, you know, 
this virus is a natural phenomenon. We don't control nature um, as much as we fight like to think so. Um, we need to be extremely cautious. We can't afford another um, uh, lockdowns like we've had in the past, and it's just too risky to, to, to let things loose. The, the, see, this this Delta variant is incredibly, uh, spreads real quickly, and... Um, we just need to. We just need to take a, just take a break. Just take one day steady. last week, no one died. I think uh, the highest has been seventeen people dying. You got people who can't pay their rent, who haven't got any work. Uh, people who can't go about their business. Five. If you you know about this, then five point one million people now waiting for procedures. Uh, we got mental health problems coming yeah. like nothing. Yeah. And oh. on, on top of that, the people who are telling us to remain socially distant from each other are, are together uh, uh, no. hugging, hugging like this. Yeah. Listen, Eddie, you know, um, that's not that's not an, that's not a great um, uh, example. But let me just give you a, let me just give you the facts. Ninety um, hospital beds, 95 percent full. We can't afford to um, uh, to to for the NHS to go through what it went through um, over the last few months. The, the NHS staff are absolutely exhausted. We can't risk it. Secondly, I agree with you. The economic damage is is significant. And would, but let me tell you now, it'd be disastrous if we if we um, if we went backwards on the virus. And the third issue is that we need to understand uh, this this variant. Um, uh, while it makes people ill, uh, we, we're vaccinating people, and so the, the chances of you dying may well be um, less but let's let's make no mistake this is a very serious illness and we need to control the variants going forward so i'm afraid i'm a, i'm a great believer in the cautionary principle i understand the impact that the that the um that lockdowns have had on people i've, I've experienced it i know i know it but i tell, let me tell you this this var this virus getting away from us will make things twice as bad as you. So, so let me just describe. finally, before twice we go to the bad. next one, let me ask you one subject, because this is the one that nobody's been able to answer for me. Uh, as far as I can see, whenever we come out, it's still going to be there, this virus. We're going to have to learn to live with this virus. So at what point, and what is the determining factor at, right, well, now we're at X well, stage in order I to can do tell you. I can tell you that when, when, we, when we've consistently uh, maintained an R value, which is below one, in other well, words, that when, could be next when year. we, well, it, well, I don't know when it's going to be, but we need you to. See, be, you see, but it's let, easy for you and me to say that because you're going to earn your money, Victor. This isn't affecting your wages. It isn't affecting my wages. So for me, I like Donna. My life hasn't changed. I'm just, I'm in my house with my family. But that isn't the story for everybody. People who can't see their family, people who can't no, see I, their children. It's really interesting because I, you know, I agree with you. I'm, I'm, if your point is meant to have me say, well, you know, argue with you about the fact that some people are suffering. I'm not going to argue with you. I, I, agree, I absolutely agree with you. But what I can't do is change the facts. And the facts are that if you have a highly spreadable virus, which makes people very, very ill and will hospitalise people and potentially overwhelm our NHS, the very people that you've just described and the people that I'm most concerned about will suffer the most. What the government needs to do is ensure that it supports those people, continuing the furlough, continuing the support for people who are paying rent, and actually ensuring that people who do get infected, particularly for on low wages, can actually afford to stay at home. If, so we need to do those things too. Let's um, yeah. end with this one. I normally try to end with a happy one. Uh, it won't be today because um, the 14th of June has really lots and lots of meanings for, for, for me. But I suppose um, emotionally, spiritually, um, this oh. is is what it means. And, and tomorrow will mark the fourth anniversary of the Grenfell Tower fire. Curtis, just tell me, wh wh where were you when you heard about it? I was actually in um, West London, um, down Kilburn Way, <laughs> when it was all happening and the traffic and everything kicked off. And I remember coming home. And the cry came out for um, mattresses. And I, remember, I just remember mattresses. The world needs mattresses. And I um, went up and bought two mattresses. What was I going to do? I just went up there. It was, um, yeah, Mr. C, a comedian, was rallying around. Oh, just just sh shaking. And again, it's, it's, it's about this whole thing that hit me was the gentrification, the fact that the building had to look attractive for people looking at it, 
rather than concerned about the people living in it. And to find out that somebody was raising alarm bells months before about how they felt the building wasn't safe. And it, it, it was horrible, it? absolutely horrible. And it's about that gap between the rich and the poor just became so evident to me, the way people were treated, the way it was all about the money. And that's the sad thing about our society that we live in. And even with this virus, it's all about the money. Follow the money and you'll see. Even now yeah. we're having this um, review of who did what and what went wrong. And nobody's going to be brought to task for this. Nobody's going to be uh, held accountable because they're right. so rich. They'll pass it down to the guy who ordered the nails. You know what I mean? It just won't. Yeah, you know, you sound like one of the people. I'm, I'm following the inquiry and I've got to tell you, you know, the guy who was in charge of the fire safety put letters after his name that didn't actually exist. He didn't, yeah. he didn't know what he was doing. Do same question to you, Donna. Can you remember? Yeah, um, I was here at home and um, I often keep BBC breakfast on from about six o'clock, but I was asleep. But you know, you're like, well, my eyes are closed. And I kept on hearing them repeating more than usual the same story, the same. So I had to sit up. I said, well, what is this? Just couldn't believe it. Just sat there and it was a bit like 9-11. You know, you're watching something happen in a building, like in real time. Um, it was a lot. And then they found out that um, an extended family member was one of the firemen that was down there. Uh, a couple of days later, my cousin, they live in Acton. Uh, shout out to Mel. She was like, no, we're going down there. Do you have any clothes? Cousin, have you got any money? And her and my other cousins went and bought out, you know, wherever they could find super drug clothes, anything just to take down to people so yeah. they could have a little bit of relief. And I'll tell you what, the thing I remember most about this is really, a, I remember seeing this white man and his and his wife, but they were full of rings and he had tats in his head and they'd gone into their bank account and they were giving each family a hundred pounds. I was so touched by, these things always get me because when bad things don't happen, we get into the micro, the minutiae of foolishness. Yeah. You see when something happens and people find their human side. That yeah. always it's touches beautiful, me. Beautiful, that beautiful. regardless of, like I said, you know, a white man with tattoos, in my time, that meant something different. But there yeah. he was, emptying his bank account. People, all pe people just looking after humans that they love because they're also humans. And I just wish we could remember more of that when there aren't those times of crisis. If there was more of that kind of like fellow feeling and humanity. But Grenfell is something that can never be forgotten. It's like a big marker on rich and poor and what was done about it. Still, somebody's yeah. saying in the chat, nobody ain't, no, who's been found guilty for it? But, nobody. Uh, yeah. And but people there. died. 72 people, at least 72 people died. Victor, um, uh, this, is, this is a story that, uh, you know, I feel really yeah. emotional about because yeah. I've taken my show to the area eight times. We went yeah. on the very next day when the smoke was still coming from the building and people were crying in the streets up at a tower uh, for people who had not surfaced yet. Uh, how did you hear about it? And what does it mean to you, Vic? Well, I, I was at work um, for hearing about it and um, I was then at Turning Point and, and we provided services in that community, indeed still do. And uh, um, in fact, indeed, we lost some of our service users and, um, uh, and our staff put themselves at risk. So it was a, uh, it was, it was deeply shocking and it still is to be honest and and you know i can only agree with what curtis and donna have said i think you know it was like it was like a, a tragic episode but just showed us the systemic failures yeah. and it's a bit like coronavirus really it's like these tragic episodes that just show us that there's something systemically wrong you know these people were in the poor end of the borough they were majority yeah. black and minority ethnic they you know <laughs> And just the complete lack of now I've been following and it's really good that you don't let this go Eddie you know you keep bringing it up because it's so important yeah. um, that you do that because you know the fact of the matter is you know every time you listen to the inquiry what you're seeing is just a constant story of people that it, the leadership did not lead all the people all the time you know they led some of the people some of the time and these people just didn't receive the leadership that they were actually paying for that they deserved and it, it, we've got to get to the bottom of it. We've got to keep going because it, it's telling us something. 
Um, you know, the sad reality is it's that telling us something. It's telling us something. Well, I, I look. I'm a skeptic. No, I'm, I think you've got a right to be skeptical. I try to avoid being cynical, and I, I think the important work that you do, Eddie, just bringing it, just not letting it go, and keep asking right. the question: Why? What? Where? Who? I think that gives me hope that we might get to the bottom of it. That's the point. I don't think we can stop. I don't think we can give up hope. But it was just one of the worst things that I've ever seen. Um, and and some of the things that we're hearing are the worst thing worst things I have ever heard. They're, they're worse. You know, in, yeah. as a public servant, as someone who's yeah. worked in public services in housing, you know, I've been a housing manager. I've developed housing. To hear, you know, we didn't know about the safety. We falsified the people not qualified. Um, the, the disregard for the safety, the fact that they were being warned um, for months by the people who actually live in the building. Um, mm -hmm. As Eddie pointed out, it seems, and, you know, the inquiry's ongoing, that, you know, what the building looked like was more important than whether it was actually safe yeah, to live in. Definitely. And, you know, this is systemic. It's not, the, the danger is, if we just see this as one episode, you know, it's done. I think what we're finding is that the same cladding is on other buildings. The oh, same right. attitudes but, but, are leading right. other but systems. They, they were building we find still it. So, the so it, 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 it is a systemic issue. We have to... We have to address the system, the systemic issues, and it's, yeah. you know, yeah. we have to. Otherwise, I think, it'll happen I think, again, I'm afraid. I, I think that, and it did. It happened with, with Lacanau House in, in, yeah. in yes. South London. Yes. The yes. results from that weren't properly published. People no. would say you, you're supposed to stay within a pod, which is supposed yes. to keep it for 15 minutes. Yes. The people who passed away were the people who adhered people to the rules. People were told to, right? they to were stay told where to they were. Stay, stay they where were they were. To stay there. And, and you do get the feeling that you know. This is why I'm so big on the mental health aspect of it, because you do feel, and I'm going there tomorrow, by the way, because yeah. we're covering it again, and my show's Good. coming from there. But but the, but the thing is that you you do get the feeling that it's a bit like the Hillsborough, or mm. you yes. know that, that that it will go on for that twenty years from now, we still won't have known, and it will continue. Theresa May wow. went there and didn't meet any of the people; just met the people that worked there. Um, she was the prime minister at the time. There's yeah. so many things. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, listen. All we can do is, you know, our sympathies to the people to the area. Systemic failure is based on a lack of humanity. That's what it well, is. Well, well, I think so. But just think about the idea that you're in one of the twin blocks up there, and you're being told to stay in your house because we have a pandemic, while you're living in a place with cladding that caused that. It's tough work. Mentally, it must be incredibly tough. It's, it's incredibly mm. tough. And I think that's, for me, that's about ensuring that we have the support services for those people and that we put, you know, it's not beyond the wit of man or woman to identify the people that are struggling and making sure that they have the support. And it's yeah. why my colleagues argue for better mental health services, because we know, we know the pandemic is affecting those people far worse than it's affecting the likes of me and you, Eddie. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's bad enough. And when you start from where Curtis starts from, you know there's already a problem there, Victor. Uh, listen, you've been fa fantastic. For somebody who was, you know, a bit shy, a bit reluctant, you know, <laughs> it's you. Yeah, he was, <laughs> he was you hesitating make, at times. It's it's you guys, you make me laugh, honestly. It's, it's been great fun. Yes. You guys are oh, really man. funny, and, and it, you, you, Eddie, you're just you're you're just a gent. You're just, you are very good at what you do. So I always feel I always feel very at home with you. I don't know why. So you brought me out. You brought me out of myself. I, I, it's safe. It's safe to come out there, Vic. Apparently, so well, I'm glad that I was a part part of your coming out. So look, listen. Please let us know about what you're doing. Please let us know how we can help. While, while we're still there on the radio, while we're still in there. And Victor, how you can we get in touch with you if we want to? What's your Instagram address? Do you know Jesus. what? I'm terrible. I'm, I, I have a Twitter account. That's it. I'm not on Facebook. I don't do Instagram. I, partly partly because I just think I can't, I What's can't your be Twitter? bothered. I don't I'm not following you. What's your Twitter? It's VOA1234. It's VOA1234. VOA I heard that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. no, I'll, I'll that, I'll That's it. You. Please keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you oh. very much. Thank you very much. Take care. Yeah, Lord, nice Lord, to meet Lord you. Victor, the boy, so. What a lovely man. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you see, yeah. he he went with Bernard Ogan as the former police commissioner to do lots and lots of work on mental health. A lot, apparently, a lot of the people who the police are coming into contact with have yeah. mental health challenges. And he came in, and this is after 
uh, sadly, the, the, Sean Rigg and that, that story. And, you know, I'd love to get Marcia on here one day talking about how to deal with people with mental health challenges. And, you know, those kinds of things were right up on the top of the pile of, right? So, boss lady. You've been very quiet today. That makes me very suspicious. You know what next Sunday is, don't you? No, remind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remind them. Father's it's Day, I know. Father's Day. It's Father's Day. No, because in my house, they only remember Mother's Day. They ain't no... They, oh, don't it's say that. Day. We do Father's Day Let's every go and steal day. something just, from a great house. But just let me read a few of these comments from... Grenfell and um, people are deeply touched lots of green hearts people still not being rehoused no one will ever pay for their part in the tra tragedy never to be forgotten forgotten truly shocking still gives me goosebumps lies 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 they still need justice again to go the government shows some people matter more than others yeah um, it's, a, so it's, a, it's a tough one um, let's run through a few. Uh, Ram John Holder, pork pie. What? Congratulations, CBE. Um, well Lems to say he's got an MBA. Jeanette Quashida. Well Jay, Jay Cole? Jay? What? See, what is the appearance of there? We'll do. Yeah. Yeah. MBE. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, a few of those. Congratulations on some of the ba lots of uh, BAFTA winners. So, congratulations. Uh, to, particularly to Michaela Cole, but lots and lots of people. That dance, Donna, that got 30,000 complaints, that, that one up after as well, you know. The, diversity. Uh, the vi diversity one, you oh, know. What an accepted uh, speech, well done. Yeah, um, I've to those things. So how did it go? I don't, I don't that doesn't, bother, I'm not interested in that. What, you're not that. interested in what, Donna? Dance. You're not interested in dance? <laughs> how did, no, you, have your, how did you have your second child, Donna? How did I have them? Have her. Your second child was was because of a blues dance I heard. No, <laughs> my dad doesn't go to blues dance. <laughs> no, you know, you're not. I've never heard anybody say I'm not interested in dance before. It's a no. Me like, no, hold on, hold on. Me like what dance? I mean like party, but I'm not. So when into you go to whole... the dance, what do you do? Watch other people and study oh. other people's business. No, okay. no, no, okay. no. What are those? I'm normally in a, I like jokes, so I'm either inside or outside getting jokes, but I kind of wait till the rub session and then I don't then get rubs anyway. Can I, can I ask what, what happens? With, <laughs> so a woman waits till the rub session, maybe the boss lady can hear, and then what do you do? Go inside. What, what do you do? How does no, it work from well, your point no, of view? I, well, I'm not going to speak for Lisa, but I'm going to, so a lot of the slow tunes are like them sing out tunes anyway. So, but the problem that I have is the person that plays the best slow tunes is my other half. So I'm normally like DJ Widow. So that's a so rubbish playing, and everybody else is playing wrong. Well, you're you trying to cover all the bases and you've just <laughs> sunk yourself. You know, that's the best time to go and get yourself a rub when he's playing. Because, you know, he can't turn up. He can't no. come around the corner. No. That's what I did I'm when you were playing music, Eddie. <laughs> you, know, you, know you know when Mistress is over the mic, use him, use that. What? I'm like, I can't do that. I can't do that. Right. Oh, cut, right. Last video and then we're finished, right? Because it's already over time. Last video. I, tell me if there's anything wrong with this video. I got this video only this morning and I saw it and I went, can I play that video? Because like, mm, yeah. it's about... No, no. <coughs> some people might think it's prejudice, but some people might think it's about self-appreciation. So the last video I sent you... Oh, I'll, 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 this, is, this is how uh, life uh, is like. I, I'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you put it? The the minute video. Let a woman which, do it, Eddie. You know which you video are you talking about, Eddie? About going into black shops, hairdressers, or we have to play that next week. I think we have to play that next week. Oh, you know down. that's a big argument now, Donna. You watch when the cameras stop rolling. Right? No argument, just silence. I told you. We don't argue. <laughs> and the thing yeah. is. Curtis, I don't, yeah. I know they're not listening, but I, when I first started coming on there, I think, oh, this is so. And Ed, no, sir, we know no, who we are the us from, who no. know we are them. Ellis. You just know. The inflection yeah, from got choice. It's short. Eddie, he has to wear Eddie short right out. Sit down. Yeah. Yes. If you ever put on a pair of trousers, she can tell you about I'm yourself. I'm telling you. So now I'm like, no, that's down. why her name is Boss Lady. I thought Boss Lady was to kind of like, G her up. No, he's no. the Boss Lady. 
That's how no, yeah, no. call it. Even when he want to come in the house, he has to ask if it's all right, boss lady. I'm coming. It's all right to come in, boss lady. Does Eddie go to bed half an hour after twelve? I'm just asking. What I'm saying is, what you know, I'm just saying. No, he's he's told me I need to be more outspoken, so I'm listening to what my husband has told me. Oh, that's it. He wears the nice trousers. Trust me. That was a nice comeback. So that was a good recovery, my girl. What? Wow, yes. Do you know what he's hurting? Yes. Look, look at love him. that. I'm gonna have to bring some Kevin Samuels down. Ah, uh, uh -huh, you see you. Do you know what? Do you know? Do you know, know do you your know, place. Know, you know your what? role. We had a we had a little disagreement, and he sent me that video. Know your place. So if yeah. you think, right? I know. I hear right. you, sister. Uh, I hear okay. you, sister. Uh, okay. Listen, um, guys. Really, really important. Um, and I want you to stay on while we do it, right? The whole point of this um, last six was to support the African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. They provide support to people in the communities. I've got to say, I'd hope that all their spots would have been full by now. They're doing a whole drive on the 19th and the 20th, uh, which is next Saturday and next Sunday. Please phone 0300 303 2737. Look, and I do understand. Good, good, good. And I do understand that yeah. people have all sorts of anxieties. And so, um, Oren and Beverly have put on this uh, webinar where well, you can yeah. ask your questions, you can find out. But you know, we're here talking about change, improvement, self development, encouragement. We're talking about all those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. I personally have got, and it might just be me. And it might be that money guy, Eric, that we had on. Yeah. I'm, I'm moving away from relying on anybody else. We've got, we're here. We're all here. We can all do it together. Uh, we get on that Fifth Avenue. But has it arrived, by the way? Because another Fifth Avenue bus clearly comes in to, to support us. And then we're on our way to Leithen and to Lewis this afternoon. Uh, you know, there are lots of people doing great community work. This is what we're trying to do. So if you are in a position you want to understand more about donating blood, we've had people on here who have been recipients of it. You've heard, particularly with sickle cell, how people may die with that. So it, it's a request, really. Um, and then next week we'll have some news about um, No Joke, uh, but we are going to be off for a, a good while. Um, and um, hopefully we can come back even if it's at least uh, once a month um please enjoy it today's going to be hot tomorrow's going to be very hot yes. donna thank you very much boss thank lady, you as always love you thank all you, thank you thank you is that what is that what you do when you go inside to the slow show me how you move again <laughs> it's, kind of busy. it's kind of busy isn't it it's kind of busy look Just... there's a lot going on don there's a lot going no. on there's a lot going on. God bless you, Donna. I try. God bless See you, that, boss, lady. Uh, boss bye -bye. lady can be found on um, Instagram. Oh, hold on. And I, I did, uh, I did my. Hang um... on, hold on, play it, play it. Hold no, on, have you? No, there's nothing to play. Have you? Oh, Eddie is going to be my first client, um, Curtis, of oh, my 12, 12 week program. He wants to tone up. Lose weight, no, so look no, out for the no. journey no. on Instagram. No. Looking no. forward to it. Looking forward to it. We did it. We did. We did uh, one yesterday because we're we're practicing. Oh yeah. We, you know, you know Arnold and Yvette. I know you know uh, the yeah. Shillingfords. The Shillingfords. Uh, they think they own all of uh, uh, you know Woodford and a great swathes of Dominica, but. So three of us are going to do it together. But I know that Miss Lady's got a whole bunch of people. We need to build up her reputation because if she can do it with me, then all these other people out there, um, it'd be great to be able to support them and to do that. So so good luck. But if you talk to me inappropriately, then I'm going to have to forget that I'm your subject. Hold um, on. But you know, get, when I'm training you... On you. Eddie, you know when I, you know when I'm training you, we're not, hus <laughs> we're not husband and wife. I'm your trainer. So you have to listen to me, okay? Bye bye. Can you Thank do you that, very Eddie? much. Bye bye. Have, bye, -bye. Have, have, have a lovely have week, you, everybody. Have bye bye. Have yourself a in. fantastic bye, week. Bye, boss lady. Bye bye. Go on, Eddie. Worst mistake we ever made was no. Worst mistake we ever made was letting her come on here. <laughs> I told you that I could have read the text. Now all of a sudden, it's like, <sighs> I don't. I don't think I should be that one. I don't. You caused me a lot of problems, <laughs> <laughs> he caused me a lot of problems. But how she's blossomed, eh? Look well, at that. Now she's, she's, young, she's not young training. anymore. She's not young anymore. Younger than you. That's all she's worried about. 
Oh, are we supposed to be working together, Brendan? Nah. Don't you see them women? Nah, they, you, they come you sold like me that. out. You sold me out in the beginning with Kevin's video. You left me hanging. I just and then you called me in the week, boy. You keep sending me his videos. This guy is on point. This guy makes sense. Suddenly today, what? That idiot. I think he's a misogynist. <laughs> what, Eddie? You changed. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your support. Uh, lovely oh. to have Victor on board. As I said, I wasn't he fantastic, huh? Yeah, troublesome, argumentative. Yeah. Just all the but kind the of thing with your friends. Work. Sometimes you need to bring humor into their lives as well, Eddie. Because he obviously <laughs> enjoy No, but it's the first time he's ever seen you laugh today. Because you get so up in your head. Both of you two sitting down, and the other guy from Wolverhampton. The three uh, of you. Pa Patrick Vernon, yes. Yeah, I can imagine three of you sitting down, boy. I'm surprised that you don't just walk off and say, boy, I'm done. I'll give up. No. Come on, keep it up. He, he was so happy today. Look at him smiling. He was. He was. It was some a, extra it was light bulbs, but he was all right, man. I told him, you know. I told him. I told him. I didn't he know was. where he was until the cup came. Hey, the don't minute. stop. You're already on the line. Stop now. Leave. My friend Victor alone. You know, he didn't say it's a cup of tea. I thought it was the moon. I was like, what? It's tea. Listen, bro. Um, as I say, last week, next week's the last one. We're going to see if we can get you out there. See if you can get uh, near to Windrush Square because Wind, Windrush Day is a couple of days later. So lots coming up. Um, it's the top of summer, isn't it? Midsummer's Day, um, the mm. 21st on the Monday. I don't think we're getting yeah. released, just in case you're interested. No, but in your debate, it's irrelevant to most of us, because I'm scared anyway. So I've been living, distancing myself from everybody anyway. Did a gig last week. Everybody's in their car, and people's like, oh, this is weird. It was perfect. Absolutely perfect, because I didn't have to see anybody, didn't have to talk, touch anybody, just talk. And it was a perfect gig, and I had a great time. Yeah. Lad, listen, thank you, Curtis. God bless you, my brother. Another fantastic one. Really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, good please show, stay, mate. Please stay safe. Absolutely. And um, we'll be here next week for the uh, final in this uh, series. I just want to take a minute, you know, to say thank you to um, Alison, to say thank you to Andy, and to say thank you to Jill Nichols. Uh, those three people did come in, Alison Bajakin as well. Thank you very much um, for all the people uh, through the time who've uh, donated money through the GoFundMe or who have bought the T-shirt. So we got a whole new range, I think, bags, T-shirt, masks, cups, wh whatever, which I'll talk to you about next week. Um, we've got lots to fit in next week. Please make sure you are with us from midday, um, and then we'll tell you what's happening, because hopefully by then uh, we'll know ourselves. Um, it is Father's Day, so I'm trying to get Courtney from father to father on just to talk about, it's quite interesting what Victor was saying today, but just to talk about fathers, the importance of them, and maybe you can tell us a, a, about yours. So if there's still a story you think that we could cover before we take our summer recess, uh, then please let us know. I think by now you know how to um, contact um, uh, me. First of July, I think we got some stuff going on um, with uh, Courtney and Father for, to Father. I'll, I'll put it in the group so you can find out. Follow Boss Lady, as I say, Lethan, Lewis, Mastermind, Ben, uh, the legendary Mastermind coming up. Um, tomorrow is going to be hotter than today. Don't wear your socks with your sandals and enjoy yourself. God bless you. Until next time, hashtag no joke.